Hello, yeah, the wind's come up, isn't that wonderful? I have a little bit of a rain come over here. I don't think it's been much, but uh, enough to stop me from working outside in my garden for a little bit. Uh, I'll take you on a little bit of a tour of the place. Um, here I've got some potatoes growing. I mark them, I cover them up with the uh, wood chips and then I mark the rows with my uh, trusty little electric fence post I got from uh, uh, Menard. It's kind of like a Home Depot or a Lowell's, but they have a lot more stuff. Um, I actually prefer them over to, uh, Home Depot and Lowell's. Lowell's has, sometimes has some nice stuff, but uh, Menard's is sufficient uh, and it seems to have more lumber items. So anyway, that's my potatoes. They are slowly coming through. Here are my uh, cucumbers. I'm not exactly sure what happened to the uh, one on the right hand side, but uh, let's see if I can actually bring you in and see if I can find anything here. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, probably just, yep, there we go. Right down at the base there, you can see some cucumbers growing. On this other one over here, I just cannot see anything. Maybe I forgot to plant it, but there's nothing coming there, and uh, I'm not sure why. I might, if I, if I have chance, I might uh, just replant those or just give it a little bit more time. Over here I have some beets. They're starting to grow in places. I actually planted uh, three rows close to each other. Let's see if I can actually find them here. Yeah, there we go. You can see they're in a row there. And uh, next row over, next set of three rows over is my uh, carrots so there I have to be really patient and let those come they seem to be a slow growing um, plant and uh, but once they get going they're pretty decent I've put a soaker hose on these I haven't been totally faithful on uh, getting them wet but uh, eventually they'll they'll take off and uh, and start growing so over here is my next sweet corn patch and uh, the weeds are growing in it and that's okay by me because uh, uh, I'll wait until the day I plant and then I'll go through and uh, till it again up really nice and then uh, plant my uh, sweet corn in with my uh, uh, little earthway planter. I picked up another one of those. I uh, got a really good deal on it. And uh, uh, maybe next year I might make one of them into a behind the tractor planter. I do have a, uh, a larger planter, but I think I'm, I've got to do a lot of work to that to get that to uh, work or plant correctly. So. I'll probably stick with my Earthway planters until I get a chance to work on that other one. Walking into my greenhouse here, I've got the sides down in hopes that the sun will come out here a little bit and uh, I can maybe open them up just a little bit. But uh, I have some uh, tomatoes that I had bought from the greenhouse and, uh, and got those uh, planted and and going, uh, the variety is big beef. Over here I'm trying something a little bit different. I'm actually uh, planting the seed right into a cube and uh, having the cube stay watered every two hours, five for five minutes. And uh, I have uh, written on here what I have in each one. So far I don't see anything coming up, but uh, Give some patience, hopefully they'll uh, start sprouting and coming through. But I put multiple seeds in here in hopes that uh, at least one will sprout and grow. 
Um, if I get more, uh, if I, I, I'll, I'll allow two plants to grow in here, that's not a problem. I'll just uh, uh, train them out so that they split apart a little bit. That's not a problem. But I got big beef in here, brandy wine. Uh, I've never tried it. Brandy wine with hydroponics. I thought I'd give it a whirl. Uh, Rutgers. Uh, super sweets cherry. I've used cherries, uh, hydroponics. I've done those, and they seem to do okay. This one's cherry bomb, and then this one is Pisano, Italian type. Uh, but like I say, I don't see anything coming here, so maybe this is just nothing but a big fail. Who knows? But it's, it's fun to experiment with. If it doesn't work out, all I'll do is uh, cut a sucker off of one of these and uh, uh, get it rutted and get it started. Here is my cucumber. They're called Tyra. Uh, they're from Johnny Seeds. They are about a dollar a seed you get for ten dollars you get ten seeds in a packet it seems like kind of a rip but uh, once they do grow they are uh, beautiful um, mine got stunted a little bit on when I started to grow them but once you get them in this system it really they really start to take off this one really looks nice uh, this one not so well uh, Something got into this one and dug it out, uh, but I'm going to let it go because surprisingly sometimes uh, uh, they'll catch. There was still roots left in here, so I stuck it back in the nutrient area there where it squirts on, and hopefully that will come, but if not, I also have six more of these Dutch buckets that I'm going to put in here, and I'm going to try like uh, over there, I'm going to try to put the seed in the cube and then... Uh, keep the cube wet and see if I can get them to just uh, take off through here. Again, here are the ones that I bought uh, from a greenhouse and they're the big beef variety. Here are the ones I started from seed. Like I said, I really messed up this year. I did not use my ebb and flow uh, setup and uh, I left to go on vacation and everything just kind of went south on me. Uh, as far as my seeding seedlings go uh, if I had time to start over again I would but I don't uh, it's just too late but uh, if you look here uh, this one here I believe or yeah maybe it was this one here was laying flat on the top of the lid but uh, a tomato tomato is resilient and they do uh, take off after a bit and I will probably venture to say I am going to uh, say this or predict that these will probably be my best tomatoes. They're big beef, but for some odd reason, the ones when I do the seeds compared to just putting plants in, I know these look extremely healthy, but uh, I seem to have really good luck with my ugly, gangly uh, big beef that I start from seed. I don't know why, uh, just just the way it is. Sometimes uh, homely and ugly sometimes is better in the plant world. But if you look back here last year, you look at some of the videos, I tried an experiment and I, I failed. I'm the one that failed at the experiment. Um, but uh, I did some uh, hydroponic strawberries and uh, some of them actually took root in my greenhouse and so I thought well okay I'm just going to let them grow this year for a little bit and before fall when they start to die off I think I'll dig them up and transplant them. I think there might be a weed growing amongst uh, maybe not maybe that is strawberry leaves looks kind of suspect so anyway yeah I got some weeds in here dandelions all kinds of stuff I don't like to use chemicals in the greenhouse because uh, it really could uh, cause a big problem in a greenhouse where there's a lot of humidity that chemical could uh, pick up I'm thinking about using a steam or maybe using some concoction that will kill weeds in a sprayer that's not uh, going to kill my uh, plants. 
But here again, I got some more strawberries growing here and there. So there you go. The setup, a little, I uh, probably shouldn't take such a long time here talking about my setup, but you can look back at some of my videos. I have uh, uh, four tanks outside I'll show. I have timers, I have pumps in these uh, particular reservoirs. Uh, this reservoir has kind of gone a little south on me here. It's, uh, uh, I'll have to watch it because uh, it seems to be a little bit on the, uh, how do you say it, um, uh, it's bulging. But what I do is I use totes and uh, I love the ones with the black tops because they don't promote algae growth. Algae growth. And uh, I do have a fan up here to take out the excess heat. If it gets a little hot in here, it'll they'll come on. Uh, so I should probably give this get this power cord out of the way for that poor plant. But uh, pump turns on, water comes into these little tubes, and then it goes uh, through the uh, bucket, fills up to a certain uh, level, and then uh, I think kind of in a way siphons out because they have those uh, elbows turning down and it does siphon out within I would say probably about an inch of the bottom it stays wet obviously the the uh, media which is perlite uh, does stay wet in there too so that is my setup for green my greenhouse hydroponic setup drive by here and uh, show you my sad onions but uh, I'll take what I can get they are starting to come I did set up a, a raised bed garden I did set up some uh, irrigation uh, in them and uh, I see the weeds are starting to come of course uh, I got to get at that and uh, pull some of those weeds and get a cover on there I'm thinking about uh, grass clippings for that uh, if you look here i've got green beans coming up all over the place they're a uh, volunteer from last year's green beans and uh, i probably will let uh, some of those that are not in the raised beds or if they are in the raised bed in a place where there's not an onion i'll probably let them grow but uh, I'll probably give them most of them a uh, pull out of here uh, there's some over here I'll probably let grow. Some over there look pretty healthy. I'll let them grow and see what I can get out of it. I have uh, enough material at least for five more, uh, four more maybe uh, raised beds like these. And uh, I'll get that uh, done here uh, hopefully this afternoon and then get them in place and get them filled up with dirt. So there that's going to be for my peppers but uh that's what's going on here but like i say it's a really a weedy mess right now and i either got to get I, I i know i got to get those pulled but uh a better said solution maybe would be to uh, get a cover on there while they those weeds are still pretty young here is my uh pumpkin patch i have uh three different varieties uh, coming out of this one and uh, uh, the the first two on this side post I have post around the where I planted the seeds so I could locate where to water them and stuff so hopefully they'll grow they should they've have for me in the past this particular pile here was uh, culminar and dirt that uh, was taken out of the local uh, my neighbors uh, feedlot or not feedlot but um, an area where they had stored some manure and uh, I took a, a pretty good size uh, truckload from him and uh, dumped it here and I've uh, just been using it year after year at this point it's pretty much pure dirt um, but it's pretty rich soil pretty rich so that'll be my pumpkin patch Here's my sweet corn that I had planted here, oh, probably about a week or so ago. That's probably about two weeks now. Uh, I think that would be on Friday, it'd be two weeks. So, 
that's coming pretty decent. That was done with my little earthway seeder. I have to do some this Friday and that other patch I was showing you. So I get that tilled up and I had retilled this and then this is the one I had actually sprayed some uh, post-emerge on. Uh, kind of against that, but uh, tell you what, I'm kind of against pulling a lot of weeds too. Uh, post-emerge will keep some of the uh, the weed uh, growth down uh, like pigeon grass and some other things. Um, looks like I got some weeds coming up down there so if I can get a uh, get my trusty uh, garden hoe out here and uh, get that to uh, uh, put that to work and and get some of those weeds uh, uh, controlled a little bit so they don't become big ones. But uh, that is that.